Is your dog itching, scratching, losing hair, and you don't know why? Well then you should be watching this video. My YouTube channel is all about natural pet health and wellness. And if you like what I'm talking about, I'd love for you to click down there and subscribe to my channel. So you guys, let's just say that you have an itchy dog. Like your dog is doing something like Pippi here. So if you guys have a dog that's especially itchy, they're licking their paws, shaking their head, losing hair. So where do you start? Before we get right into all these array of different revenues, it's really important first to really know, you know, what's going on with your dog. Like, what is the cause of all that itchiness? And then once you determine that, then you can sort of go, go down the mo most appropriate course of remedies. Pippi, who got you guys may or may not have seen before, she's one of my friend's dogs. She's a wonderful yellow lab. Yes, Pipster who just so happens to be acutely itchy again. She's suddenly itchy. And uh, her my one friend George said, you know, what's going on? Can you check her out? Give me, give me an idea what's the cause of it. So Pippi has been itchy for the last week or so. Um, she's been increasingly itchy. She's You can scratch your side, she'll start to itch. She's losing more hair than normal. She, you know, maybe she's, perhaps she's licking her paws a little bit more often than not. And, are you red? Pipster? Looking in here in her groin, it looks pretty good. I don't see excessive redness. So the big thing initially is you, you think about the history in terms of a little bit of thought of when did the itching first start? How long has it gone on for? Has your dog, for instance, been in a kennel and come back itchy? So when we're looking at dogs that are itchy, there's sort of three big main subsections we're looking at. The first big thing is it possible that it's an external parasite. It could be something like fleas, for the most common cause of dogs to be itchy. It could be something else, you know, such as lice. Maybe your dog has been in a kennel, they've been infected with sarcoptic mange. Or perhaps it's something like lice. Regardless, we're looking at external parasites. The next more sort of common class of allergens in dogs is they're allergic to their food. Has your dog consumed something within the last period of time? Has there been a diet change that's triggered this? Generally, when we're looking at the food allergies, more often than not, it's something your dog has been fed for a period of time. One of the big differentiators between food allergies and environmental allergy is that it's always ongoing. Your dog to sort of, it's not seasonal, or your dog may be allergic to a pollen. They're eating that food, they're constantly itchy. And then the last sort of big class is called environmental allergy or atopy. And that's where your dog is allergic to some type of environmental substance. Often it could be airborne, such as pollen, maybe what's in all of our houses, house dust mites. You name it, there's a whole array of them. And what happens in that case, typically we're looking at a dog that's sort of six months and older, more often than not, they're past a year. And initially it can be seasonal, where it starts out in the spring, they're intensely itched from the spring, summer into the fall, and then it stops. Often that can be more of a trigger of this thing called atopy, environmental allergy. But those are the three big sort of principles or classes. So what do we know with Pippi? She's a middle-aged female dog. She hasn't had a history of itching. And this has come on fairly suddenly, within the last month or so. Um, so I can pre be pretty confident in saying that it's unlikely it's a food allergy. It just come on within the last month. It's possible, but it's unlikely because she be, she's been fed a similar food throughout her life. She hasn't been itchy, or itchy with that. One of the other possibilities, could it be environment, environmental allergy or atopy? Yeah, it could be that as well too. The girl Pipster. But once again, she hasn't had a history of itching. I mean, this is something that's come on fairly suddenly within the last month or so. If, if Pippi had atopy or environmental allergy, I'd expect she'd have years of this ongoing. It would have gotten worse as she's gotten older. I would expect other signs too. So if Pippi had atopy, I'd expect that she'd have excessive paw licking that she'd have recurring ear infections, that she would have hair loss, redness in her groin. Um, all those array of more con common signs and symptoms of the most common cause of dogs that are itching, um, environmental allergy or atopy. The other thing I want you guys to do is do 
a very thorough exam. And by all means, go see your veterinarian, um, have them do the same thing. But I want you to be comfortable just doing the basic exam of your dog's skin at home. I want you to be able to look at all of your dog's skin, um, look at where, is there hair loss or not, is there redness, get a feel of their hair itself, is it very dry and brittle, or is, are you seeing a fair amount of dandruff? So for instance, Pippi, you know, start at your dog's nose, look around their muzzle, you know, do you see any sort of ulcerations or lesions at all? Um, you know, look at the corner of the lips, the eyes, have a good look into your dog's ears. Is it really red or not? Do they have a secondary ear infection? And, you know, really look through at all of your dog's skin, getting a much better sense, you know, of what's going on. Um, briefly, while, we, while, while I'm doing this here with Pippi, you know, quickly, it looks pretty good. I mean, I'm not seeing any particular area of hair loss or any special lesion. I mean, look at her, look at the pads, look in between your dog's digits, you know, see if you see any other particular changes, have a good feel. I mean, do the pads feel sort of a little bit rough, but still softish? You know, that's a normal looking pad. Pippi, from what I can see on her skin, it's looking pretty normal. So that's more typical of a dog that doesn't have a food allergy or environmental allergy. Generally, her coat looks all pretty good, from what I can see, but she's still itchy, so why is she itchy? Good girl, Pippi. So our next thing what I want to do is have a better look at her fur itself. And what I'm really starting to think about is there a possibility that she's got a parasite. Because she was at a kennel about a month ago and is now acutely itchy. So let's check and make sure that's not the cause of her itchiness. So what I'm going to do now with Pippi is give her a good combing with this flea comb. See if I can find any type of external parasite. Um, in particular, the area where I live in, we seem to have a lot of lice. But I want you to have a really good look. First of all, I mean, the fleas are their most common thing. So if you're often, you're gonna be, it's going to be difficult to find a flea, but often you can find the flea eggs or the flea poop. They show up pretty well. And let's have a good comb pipster and see what's going on in here for you. I think it's hard to see, but see all that white hair and right there where my finger is, there's a little, see that little sort of grayish thing that's may or may not be able to see it move? That is a live louse. I mean, the pippy is lice. Dog lice are pretty hardy creatures. Um, by all means, you can try some of the more natural type things you know, initially, you know, just washing all your dog's bedding. Um, uh, secondly, get, using just a, a good quality uh, flea shampoo. Um, so the other thing you guys can consider to do naturally to decrease the lice burden and sort of help speed up the resolution of your dog having it is having one of these flea combs. Comb them as thoroughly as possible, removing as many of the eggs or nits as you can. You know, gathering up and just putting them in a bag, throwing them away. With people, often that's all it takes. It's a matter of having a knit comb. You may or may not need to use some type of shampoo. And knowing that they have about a three week life cycle. So with Pipster here, I have some Revolution. It'd be the one that I encourage you to think about using. Um, the one that I think has probably got the least number of side effects that I'm comfortable suggesting that you do use topically. That is effective against lice, although it is off label. Um, it's also effective against uh, mange, sarcoptic mage, uh, as well as fleas. You're going to deal with all the external parasites um, with one relatively safe conventional medication, specifically when it's just used for the intended purposes. It's not sort of used on an ongoing basis. And we're looking at how are your dog's calculated dose of revolution is, and get, we're giving a total of three doses. So Pippi's going to get one dose now. We're putting it up in here between her shoulder blades. Girl Pipster then she's gonna have that repeated every two weeks for three treatments. Good girl. Thanks you guys for watching this edition of Veterinary Secrets. I'd love for you to click down there to like this video, click up there to subscribe to my channel, and lastly, click that link directly in the box below, and then when you do that, and you sign up for my newsletter, I can send you my free books and my free videos on how to heal your dogs at home with my top natural remedies.